for watching and please love condos. So the title of this video is called Sacred Singleness slash Three Myths About Singleness. It's gonna kind of be a two part video in one. So I'm gonna do a really quick book review on one of my favorite books on singleness and it's by Leslie Ludi. Um, and then I'm gonna go into the three myths about singleness that many of us have lots of times as Christians. So stay tuned and uh, yeah. One of my favorite books on this subject is um, Sacred Singleness by Leslie Ludi, and this is the cover. I absolutely love this book because I feel like it is it's very gospel centered and she doesn't coddle singles when it comes to this topic she goes in <laughs> i don't feel like she makes it as though singleness is you know something that you need rehab for or it's not about coping as a single but really about viewing jesus christ as our ultimate goal you know what i'm saying and keeping our eyes on him and not allowing this culture around us to define what singleness is or what marriage is um so i highly 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 suggest that you read it um i'm gonna read a couple of excerpts darn it i lost the page sorry but it's all good so i could i could probably read anything um the bottom line is this singleness is a gift an opportunity and a blessing and it should be treated as such that doesn't mean we should swear off marriage that doesn't mean the desire to be married is wrong. And that doesn't mean we should stop praying that God would bring our spouse into our life in his own time and way. But it does mean that we should stop griping and complaining about singleness and that we should allow God to reveal his amazing purposes for this season of our lives. It says marriage was not designed to make up for what God lacked. It was not that God was unable to meet the longings of Adam's heart. So he had to create Eve, rather. He created marriage to be a reflection of the perfect union and fellowship that we have with him. The entire Bible is a love story, a romance between Jesus Christ and his bride. God is the God of romance. Our earthly marriages are meant to showcase the ultimate marriage that we will one day share with him, just as the Song of Solomon so beautifully portrays. But even if we never experience earthly marriage, we can be completely fulfilled by an intimate romance with our beloved Prince, Jesus Christ, the lover of our soul of our soul. He and he alone is the one who fulfills all in all. Um, and that's just a couple of parts, but like I said, I highly, highly recommend you uh, check this book out. And um, y'all know that I am a big fan of Amazon because you could get books literally for like a dollar um, and you just pay for shipping. Um, so I'm gonna post the link down below. I actually think I'm gonna read this soon again. I think I need to you know refreshing yeah i definitely highly highly recommend that book and you guys should check it out and if you do get it and if you do read it post your comments down below and maybe we could like talk about it and stuff so i am going to transition into the second part of my video and it's three myths about singleness um that we tend to have as as christians whether single or married so myth number one contentment is my ticket to a husband Many times we have this idea that if I am content enough, that is going to guarantee me a spouse. And oftentimes we hear this testimony, which is great, um, but it's a testimony of, you know, I was, you know, in these different relationships, I was broken, I was not living on my purpose, and then I got saved, I got content, and ding, ding, ding. I got me a man that's great that's great but like I said contentment is not the ticket to getting a man just because we're content does not mean that got necessarily a marriage or a man is waiting on the other side of contentment and a lot of times what we do is we put contentment into this category of okay if I'm a good enough Christian, if I serve in enough ministries, if I'm content enough, if I'm a good little Christian content girl, then God is gonna bless me with a husband. And so what we do is we serve in these different ministries, we do all of these things to distract us from our singleness. And so we expect, okay, God, I'm doing all of these things, where's my husband? And five years pass or two years pass, and we're like, well, God, where's my man? And then we start to get frustrated when it's like what was the heart or what was the intention behind serving the whole point of contentment 
is not to just reach this plateau or reach this final stage so that you can be qualified for a husband. The whole point of contentment is realizing the sufficiency of Christ. In the book of Philippians, um, Paul is writing from prison. And Paul, wrote, you know, as we know, wrote a large part of the New Testament. And, you know, he experienced so much persecution, imprisonment, you know, so much for the for the gospel of Christ, for the name of Christ. And in the book of Philippians, he's writing to the people of Philippi. And um, I'm going to read, and it's in Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 through verse 13. And it says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. In those couple of verses, I want you to highlight the word learned or focus on the word learned. Through tribulation, and through hardship, he learned how to be content. Suffering, pain, hardship, it teaches us how to be content. The definition of contentment is a state of satisfaction and to be sufficient. So the whole point of contentment is for us to realize the sufficiency in Christ. So with Paul, through all of his hardship, through all of his trials, and remember, he's writing this letter from prison. Whether he had a lot, whether he had a little, whether he was loved, whether he was hated, whether he was experiencing joy, whether he was experiencing turmoil, he learned that through everything, through any season that he's in, he can do and he has the ability to do all things through Christ, through his Savior, who strengthens him. So again, the point of contentment is not being good enough to earn God's blessing, but it is for us to realize the sufficiency of Christ. So in our singleness, whether God has us single for another year, for another 10 years, for another 25 years, a lot of us are in bondage to our fear of being single. I'm not going to sit up here and lie and say, okay, well, you know, I prophesied that God's going to send you a man in 2017. I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I might be single for another 20 years. That's a very possible thing but I had to come to the conclusion that even if even if God never sends me a husband and even if I never get married I can do whatever season God calls me to whatever season God calls you to he gives you the grace for again contentment is not a ticket to getting a man the Lord is my shepherd I have everything that I need and that Christ's sufficiency is more than enough myth number two Marriage is the promised land and singleness is the wilderness or marriage is graduation and singleness is detention. So what we do a lot of times is we, there's marriage, there's singleness and we put them on two different levels. So we look at it as marriage is up here, singleness is up here. And if you haven't made it here, you're a second class Christian because you haven't made it yet. You have not gotten to the place where God rewarded you with marriage. The truth is marriage is simply a difference of season. A lot of us, like I said, us as Christians, single Christians, we feel like I'm a second class Christian or even some married people, no shade, <laughs> you know, could look at single Christians as like, you know, boo, you know, you didn't quite make it, you know, to the marriage league. So, uh, yeah, keep praying. And it's like this undertone of like, you're here. I'm up here, I'm up here cause I'm in a relationship and because I've matured to this place where I'm worthy of a relationship and you're down here because you are crazy. The word of God tells us something different. First Corinthians, Paul addresses various things concerning marriage, singleness, divorce, um, dating, or I'm sorry, being in a marriage with an unbelieving spouse. Um, and he talks about the undivided devotion that singleness allows. I would like you to be free from concern. A married man is concerned about the Lord's affairs and how he can please the Lord. But a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world, how he can please his wife. And his interests are divided. 
An unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit, but a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world, how she can please her husband. I am saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way and undivided devotion to the Lord. Now, some people have argued with that scripture and said, well, that's just Paul's opinion. Scripture says that all scripture is inspired by God. So the fact that it's in this book shows that it is inspired by God. It didn't say some scripture, it didn't say certain scripture, it says all scripture. If you are single, you have the opportunity to serve God undistracted. As a married woman or as a married man, your interests are divided. Now, you can't get married and just be like, you know, I'm just gonna serve the Lord and neglect your husband, neglect your family, and neglect your kids. Talking about, yeah, I'm just gonna serve the Lord and I just wanna stay in my pray prayer closet all day. Like, you have a responsibility to your husband. Um, you also have to think about your partner and you have to think about your kids. And, and there's just a responsibility, an earthly responsibility that single people, that us as single people do not have yet. So Paul is saying, you know, again, if you're single, I say this so that you will serve God or you would have undivided devotion to the Lord. And I talk about this in a couple of, of my past videos about how we have this whole idea of purpose. It's like this doctrine of purpose and everybody's on the path. Oh God, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? Um, if I am a single woman, which, which I am, <laughs> um, but as a single woman or as a single man, my purpose is to serve God undistracted, period. There is a purpose for singleness, just like there's a purpose um, for marriage. In Ephesians 5, it talks about, you know, the, the, the marriage depiction. And the purpose of marriage is to um, have an earthly representation of the gospel, of the relationship between Christ and his bride. Um, so marriage has a purpose, singleness has a purpose, but that does not mean that one is above the other. It does not mean that marriage is up here and singleness is up here. It's simply a difference of season. That is it. It is not, you are not a second class Christian just because you don't have a ring, just because you do not have a man. Everything that God creates, it comes with its own glory and its own beauty. Beauty, Just like the sun and the moon, they're both created by God and they both have different benefits. They both have different beautiful things about it, but we need both. And both are created by God. Both of it, both of those things serve a purpose. So it's the same with singleness and marriage. Myth number three, my desire to be married is sinful. Now, marriage is a godly institution. Marriage is something that um, God created. I don't care what this world says. I don't care how much this world tries to twist and pervert the definition of marriage. Marriage is created by God between man and a woman to display the earthly depiction of the gospel, of Christ and his bride. So having the desire to be married is perfectly fine it's a godly and it's a righteous desire but the problem comes in when we start to worship the creation more than we worship the creator a lot of us sometimes feel like i have to get rid of my desire for a spouse altogether that i have to get rid of my attraction to the opposite sex altogether that that's somehow sinful no god created us for man and woman to come together <laughs> that's why we have certain body parts that complement each other because we are supposed to come together god isn't trying to get rid of your desire for marriage a lot of times god is trying to get rid of our sin of idolatry and putting his creation which is marriage on this pedestal rather than him god was the first officiator of marriage between adam and eve I highly suggest you read Romans. Um, it's such a great book on just the need of the gospel and um, it's just a great study on just salvation and what it means and what Christ did for us. But it starts off talking about um, basically the fall of man and uh, our need for Christ and how, you know, we're sinful and we're wicked and how people in, in, in Noah's day when God flooded the earth um, 
it was just filled with so much immorality and sexual sin. In Romans 125, it says they traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Personally speaking, I can't wait to be married to a fine man of God <laughs> who loves the Lord like crazy, you know, and who literally just lives to serve him. Um, it's a great, it's a godly desire. There's nothing wrong with it. But the problem comes when we start to worship it more than we worship our God and worship our creator. A lot of times us as singles, it's hard for us to take advice from married people because we're like, well, you sitting up here with your man or booed up talking about, yeah, girl, be content. Well, it's easy for you to say. <laughs> we're resistant when it comes to, to hearing from married people. Um, but... I think it's wise. I think it's wise to pay attention. There's a reason why people say marriage is difficult. It's wise to 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 listen to people who are in that position. You know, there has to be a reason why they're saying that. And you know, I, I'm sure marriage requires work and it requires sacrifice. And you know, even the whole institution of marriage, it's not about us. No matter what this world says, that marriage is about you being happy and you, you know, you just getting your dreams fulfilled. It really isn't. You know, and at the end of the day, everything that we see, the Bible says that in heaven, we're not going to be married and everything that we see is passing away and the altar and a ring and the ability to say we're married and the ability to say we're a wife. At the end of the day, that's not the finish line. Just because I get married does not mean that is the end all be all and I could go on and die now. <laughs> like that is not the finish line. And I said that in my a video that I made maybe a year ago or a couple years ago called single and salty but the altar is not what well, it ain't my finish line it's none of our finish line the our finish line is heaven our finish line is is the end is getting to the end of our lives and saying we glorified him with everything we did the will of God and we obeyed scripture we loved God and we loved people so I just encourage you, um, one, to not look at yourself as a second class Christian just because you, you're single or just because we're single. And two, to allow God to renew all of our minds about what singleness is and to not allow the culture around us, even sometimes the Christian culture around us, to define what singleness is, but to really search the scripture. Because the truth is, even though we, we don't want to hear it, the Bible calls singleness a gift. And a lot of times we're like, ah, oh, Lord, that's a gift that you could keep. We have to humble ourselves and realize, okay, maybe there's a revelation that I didn't have. Um, and so ask God to help you see singleness as a gift that it is. Be real with God and say, God, I don't see this as a gift. Like I'm lonely. I'm discouraged. I'm the only one that's single in my circle. Like be honest with God um, and search the word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to renew your mind and to change how you view it. Um, and like I said, it's not about getting rid of your desire to get married because it's a godly and it's a righteous desire, but also understanding contentment and the sufficiency of Christ that even if your deepest desires don't get fulfilled, God is enough and that Christ is sufficient. So I thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next